You know how people are always saying, try that on the Asia server, buddy? This is the Asia server. The Asia server where people can get hit by cars and it doesn't even slow them down. This guy's impervious to pain. No nerve endings. Well, hello there, human sippy earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushka, and as always, we're going to be running through a little bit of tactical gameplay today. I'm going to show you two games. The first is this little section in the FPP world, and the second is a TPP game on Miramar. Now, I've got a couple of clips left to run out there for TPP uh, before the season finishes. The main reason being that... Uh, I was doing a video on bolt actions versus sniper rifles, and the easiest way to do that was to play Miramar, and more importantly, there's a really good Tommy Gun skin that I wanted to get. <laughs> so I ground an upgrading in TPP to get that. That's basically why I did it. Uh, the thing I want to talk about today is very, very simple, uh, especially, and this is about playing solo versus squad. This is some really key gameplay tips to solo versus squad. Number one is the importance of a, th uh, a level three helmet. And number two is how I'll overstack oftentimes on meds. Now, I get a lot of people telling me, oh, why do you use a med kit all the time instead? And it's generally because I've got an arsenal of med kits, uh, even to heal small amounts. Now, the big thing about playing solo versus squad, I find, is if you've got a level three helmet, which is super important, even if it's damaged, it allows you to poke targets. Because unless they have an AWM, if you're full health, and you're stacking your meds, and you're always taking boosts, you can afford to poke targets. Because when you poke, it doesn't make any difference if they hit you with a Car 98 or an M24 or something else. You're still able to poke again without getting knocked. Okay? Uh, and that is super, super important, you can see there. The other thing about playing solo versus squad, particularly in, F in TPP, as you can see here, is you better get good at positioning. Um, if you are one versus four, and you do not have the prime position, you are already at a disadvantage. You are now just making it horrific for yourself. And this is one of the reasons why I tend to do pretty well solo versus squad in TPP, because TPP, it is so freaking easy to recognize position with the third party peaking mechanic. Now, those guys that I got stuck into down there don't seem to realize it, but there is a bunch of guys way out to the north, 15, 30 of them, who are already pushing down towards the circle that I'd seen previously. And by pulling up in that position, they stuck themselves between me and those guys, which is a train wreck of a position for them. The big issue I have here is that I've only got a level two helmet. So I feel very, very dodgy about poking these guys. And I'm actually quite conservative with the way I'm gonna expose myself. Now, I love playing solo versus squad because it is a big challenge. I'm just going to fire off a bunch into that smoke. Didn't get any reply. No one's making eyes at me. Great. There's five left alive. It's going to be the full squad that is further down towards the other end of the map. And they know that this is where the gunfire was going on. So I'm expecting that they will be overlooking me. Or at least looking in this direction. And it may seem kind of hopeless. Because look at the distance that I've got to cover. But... This is where broken cover is super important because what you basically bet on is best case scenarios. Now, I did a, a video recently uh, which was entitled the uh, PUBG, like uh, the brutal maths of PUBG, you know, winning strats, that kind of thing, just the other day, actually. And you're going to see what I do in this is basically try and stack as many small advantages together as I can to create a outcome that is more favorable to me. Now, I know those guys are way out over there. I don't know that they're a full squad. I don't know if they're in uh, a couple of duos. So what I'm going to do is start approaching that area very, very cautiously while staying in cover as much as possible. I'm pretty certain that the guys that engaged me from that VW bus are all dead. I did get kills from them. That was great. But I'm not 100% certain. So until I am 100% certain, I just treat them as a possibility. And I'm still very, very conscious of, of where they were situated because I have been nutted that many times from people that I was sure were dead that you know now I, I'm just about over it I don't believe anyone's dead until they're actually at my feet in a wooden box now the big thing is I can see the crates there great pretty confident now that's all of them good stuff uh looking out across the map here and you can see the smoke 
There is smoke to the north. So I'm assuming that it is, in fact, not one squad. It is more than one squad. There's a bunch of people lying down there. Great. Watch how I approach these guys. I'm trying to get Nox. Now, I know that Nox are not going to kill them at the moment. That's not what it's all about. What I'm trying to do is create enough of an issue so that if I can get a knock, I can actually use that opportunity to move across. Now, there is more than one there. That's great. That's great. That is actually two bunches of opposition. Wonderful stuff for me. Uh, I'm engaging that guy still in the ghillie suit. He's getting engaged as well. Wonderful stuff. So now what I can do is leverage that gunfight into an opportunity to push across this open ground towards that circle. And I'm going to use broken cover. I'm going to use smoke and I'm going to use a little bit of old fashioned know-how. Uh, I.e., if you didn't realize this, you can get up inside the driver's seat of these tractors here on this big wide open area. Get a knock. Great stuff. There's another guy out to the left. There's two down. Excellent. So they're third party peeking by crawling around in the in the uh, in the grass, which is excellent for me. And there's his buddy. Only two left. I'm just outside the circle. What I would like to do is get across here to the tractor. So rather than chuck the smoke directly in front of me, I'm going to chuck the smoke into the area where the circle is, wait for it to start popping, and then run across behind that screen, well back from that smoke jump on top of the tractor and start working some magic. Now you can see here, this is obviously a tough gig. I have the circle good and proper and I can see that there is a, uh, a I'm, just, I'm, no, I'm just never taking anything for granted in this game. How many times have you taken something for granted and just learned that it was absolutely not the case? And you've learned that by copying like an AWM slug right through the, the prefrontal lobe. So I'm back up on my tractor, love a bit of farm work. And I'm overlooking. This is the ultimate third party peeking. Uh, just making sure that I have the best opportunity to, there he is. Oh, you beaut, it's two separate humans. I'll have you for a dollar. And we get the win. Now, it wasn't the hardest game in the world. And it wasn't like I was trying to make out that I was amazing. But what it was, was a very, very clear indication of taking all the little bits and pieces putting them together and turning it into a more favorable situation for me. I.e. letting the squads fight it out, using smoke well, getting into an overlook position, positioning those guys who jump me uh, out of the car between the, uh, getting them between me and the squad that was on the far northern end of the field and letting that squad finish those guys off and just all around using my brain. So until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on the Z Battlefield. Eat your veggies too. Bye for now.